Welcome to Get Licensed to Build. This is a free online workshop for those who want to get their California contractor's license. Our goal this morning is to go through all the parts of the license application and give you practical tips to help you com complete it correctly. And to give you every opportunity to demonstrate your experience and qualifications to get your California contractor's license. We will also help get you ready for your licensing exams and give you a link to a video that shows you exactly what to expect on your test day. Today's webcast is presented by the Contractor State Licensing Board, the government agency responsible for regulating the California's construction industry. I am Fouad Garigoslu, Licensing Supervisor at CSLB, and joining us is Ronald James uh, from the CSLB's License Verification Unit. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. Uh, CSLB is overseen by a 15 member board that directs administrative policy for our operations. Our board is made up of 10 public members, including one labor representative, one local building official, and one representative of statewide senior citizen organization, and five contractors. Appointments are made by the governor and the state legislator. Uh, please note, CSLB test centers are open. Applicants will have to wear masks on test day before arriving for your test. Uh, check and follow your local COVID-19 mask guide, guidance. Um, if you are watching right now on either YouTube Live or Facebook Live and want to ask questions, you will need to join us on WebEx. There is a banner with a link on the top of our uh, homepage, www.cslb.ca.gov. That is also where you can download this presentation to follow along. along. Uh, the presentation file includes clickable bonus links that appear on the slides throughout this workshop. Uh, we are going to present a lot of information today, so don't worry if you don't get it all. We will archive the video of this workshop and put it on our YouTube channel, so you can go back and watch again. To ask a question on WebEx, use the Q&A feature on the bottom right of your screen. Make sure you send your questions to all panelists. Finally, we tend to get a lot of questions during these workshops on how you document your work experience and what credit you can get for your education or military service. Those questions are fine but we would ask that you wait to send us those questions until after you see that part of the workshop. We'll go through your questions at the end of our presentation, which should last about 45 minutes. The information yep. obtained during this webcast is not, nor is intended to be legal advice. While this webcast contains general information, including legal guidelines for contractors license application, it does not contain definitive statements of the law and may not reflect the most current legal developments in the construction industry. Such guidelines communicated or discussed during this webcast are for informational purposes only. If you have questions about the application of the law for specific situations, you should contact an attorney who is familiar with California construction law or review the 20 21 edition of the CSLB publication, California Contractors License Law and Reference Book. You can download it for free on the CSLB website or purchase it directly from the publisher, LexisNexis. There are links for both at the bottom of the screen. Here is a list of what we are going to cover today. We will take you through the process for applying for California Contractor License. First, who needs a license? Why get a contractor license? The minimum qualifications you will need to get a license and what credits you might qualify for. The types of business entities, the different CSLB license class, the different CSLB license classifications, including our new B2 residential remote remodeling classification. We will spend a lot of time giving you tips on how to help fill out your application, including how to demonstrate your work experience to meet the minimum qualifications. Fingerprint requirements for a criminal background check. We will help 
get you ready for the exam or exams you will need to pass in order to get your license. And finally, the other things you will need to have in place before your license is issued. Things like a bond and insurance. First, we'll take a look at who needs a license. Here in California, a state contractor's license is needed for all construction projects priced at $500 or more. That total includes both labor and materials. The law doesn't let you break down a project into $499 pieces. It's the entire project. Also, you can't charge an hourly rate to get around the $500 threshold. If the hourly cost times the number of hours for the job totals $500 or more, you need a contractor's license. So what is the definition of a contractor? The definition comes from the state's business and professional code. In this case, it's section 7026.1. We've got a link to that code at the top of the page if you download the presentation. I'll read the entire code, but pay special attention to the part we underlined. A contractor is any person, consultant to an owner builder, firm, association, organization, partnership, business trust, corporation or company who or which undertakes offers to undertake purports to have the capacity to undertake or submits a bid to construct any building or home improvement project or part thereof. In other words, you don't have to do the work to break the law. You must have a contractor's license just to advertise that you can do the construction work or even to give a bid for a construction job if the bid totals $500 or more. So you may be asking yourself, why should I get a license? Here are a few good reasons. First, you can take pride in being a licensed professional. It shows you have taken the steps to get licensed and you're serious about your career choice. It allows you to make valuable contributions to your local community. Unlicensed contractors must operate in the shadows and cannot help make the community a better place to live. Next, it allows you to get paid for the work you've done. There is value to work done by a licensed professional. Being licensed also gives you legal options if customers don't pay you. Unlicensed contractors do not have a legal right to take someone to court to get paid because the work required a license and they weren't licensed to do the work in the first place. Also, you would be able to use the mechanics lien law. Next, you don't have to look over your shoulder with fear of getting caught. Contracting without a valid California license can lead to misdemeanor charges. Those caught, those caught face a first offense sentence of up to six months in jail and or a $5,000 fine and potential administrative fines anywhere between $200 to $15,000. Subsequent violations can result in increased criminal penalties and fines. In addition, you may face felony charges if you contract without the license when one is required in a state or federally declared disaster area, or if you try to pass yourself off as a licensed contractor by illegally using a license number. Remember, there are no educational requirements to get a license. Also, you do not have to go to the license preparation school to get your contractor's license. So what do you so need to get a license? First, it's important to understand that CSLB does not license individuals. We license companies or business, also called entities. Many entities are one person operations, but know that every entity even a one person operation must have a qualifier. That's someone who has the minimum experience and is responsible for the operations of the company. Here is the short list of minimum qualifications you will need. You must be at least 18 years old. You must have either a valid social security number or a valid individual taxpayer identification number or ITIN. You can qualify the license in one of two ways. 
First, you can qualify the license by having at least four years experience within the last 10 years as a journeyman, four person, supervising employee, or contractor in the trade being applied for. Or you can also get a qualifier for the license who has that required experience. We will spend a lot of time talking about how you can demonstrate your experience on your application in a few minutes. It may be possible for you to substitute your education, technical training, and apprenticeship training for some of the required experience. We tend to get a lot of questions on this. First, CSLB cannot prejudge your experience. Due to the number of applications we receive and process every month, we don't have the staff time that would be needed to prejudge your experience. We can only review your documents after you apply for your license. Next, to get education credit, the coursework must be directly related to the work you will be doing as a contractor. Your education cannot be substituted for more than three years or 36 months of the required experience, meaning you will need at least one year of practical experience if you get the full 36 months of education credit. To apply for education credit, you must provide CSLB with written documentation. That means a copy of any apprenticeship completion certificates you earn or Get official technical school or college transcripts. Have your transcripts mailed to you. Do not open the envelope. Leave it sealed and included with your CSLB applications packet. Note that high school courses will not earn you any credits toward your contractor's license. If you're looking to get education credit to meet the four years or 48 months experience, this is the most important slide of this entire workshop. This is the kind of credit you can expect to receive for your education. Note that for some areas, we are only giving you averages. You will see that your credits will be determined on a case by case basis. We're not going to be able to give you any more guidance than what you see on this slide. So our best advice is do not rely on the combination of your experience and education credits to barely hit the four year experience mark. There is always the real possibility you will not get as much education credit as you were hoping. Let's go through the chart from the most credit you can get to the least. The most education credit you can get is for a Bachelor of Science degree in construction management. That degree will get you the full 36 months of credit. Next is a master's or bachelor's degree in business or a law degree. Any one of those will get you 24 months of credit. An associates in science degree in construction management will get you 18 months credit. And a bachelor's degree in some other major will get you an average of 18 months credit. An associate degree in a major besides construction management will get you an average of six months credit. Credit for all individual college classes are given on a case by case basis, usually with a maximum of six months credit. Apprenticeship completion cert certificates will get you 24 to 36 months, depending upon the classification of the program. For example, a sheet metal worker apprenticeship gets you 24 months credit for the C20, HVAC, and C43 sheet metal classifications only. A lineman apprenticeship gets you 36 months in C7, low voltage, and C10 electrical classifications only. If you have transcripts for other technical training you've taken, you might be able to get some minimal credit as well. Again, don't use your education credits to try and squeak by the four years or 48 months requirement. If you served in the military, some of that service might count as well. On the bottom of the page, you will see a bonus link to our CSLB Military Application Assistance Program where you can learn more. The license qualifier also must pass 
two different exams, both taken on a computer at one of CSLB's test centers. One exam is on California business law. The other is in the specific trade covered by the license. We also have limited specialty licenses, which we will discuss later. Those licenses only require the qualifier to take the law and business exam. As we mentioned, the qualifier is the one who must take and pass the required exams or qualify for a waiver. We are not going to spend a lot of time on the waiver, only to note that you might be able to request a waiver from taking one or both exams in very specific situations. I recommend that you look at the CSLB website for more information on those specific situations. Uh, we have included a bonus link at the bottom of the page. The qualifier must also undergo the criminal background check. We will go more in depth on that in a few minutes. After the license is issued, the qualifier must be in a position to exercise direct supervision and control of the company's operations. They're also responsible for all workmanship issues. It is also important to note here that if you are trying to get the B general building contractor license and you hire subcontractors to work under you, you are responsible as the project's prime contractor for the work that they do. The next thing you're going to need to determine before applying for your license is which type of entity your business will be. There are four types. First is a sole ownership where the owner or responsible managing employee may serve as the license qualifier. Just about two thirds of the contracting businesses in California are sole ownerships. Second, a corporation where either of the current officers designated as the responsible managing officer or the responsible managing employee may serve as the qualifier. Just under one third of our licenses are corporations. A distant third is a partnership, which either of the general partners of a responsible manager or a responsible managing employee may serve as the qualifier. That's 2% of our licenses. And finally, a limited liability company or LLC, where a responsible managing member, responsible managing manager, responsible managing officer, or a responsible managing employee may serve as the qualifier. About one and one half percent of California construction companies are LLCs. Now let's talk about license classifications. A contractor's license can include multiple classifications, although you must select one when filing your application. While there are more than 40 license classifications in California, they all fall under three distinct categories. There is a bonus link to our classification list at the bottom of the screen. First is class A, or general engineering contractors. These are contractors who deal with fixed works that require a specialized engineering knowledge and skill. A contractors are the ones who build projects such as freeways, skyscrapers, and dams. Today, there are over 19,000 A contractors in the state. Next is Class B, or general building contractors. This is the largest class of contractors in California with more than 133,000. B contractors have a principal business dealing with any structure built being built or to be built that requires as part of its construction at least two unrelated building trades or crafts. In other words, a B contractor shouldn't take a prime contract for any project involving trades other than framing or carpentry unless the prime contract requires at least two unrelated building trades other than framing or carpentry. There is no limitation on B contractors to stop them from taking on projects that only include framing or carpentry. The final class is C or a specialty contractors. These licenses are for construction work that requires a special skill and whose principal contracting business 
involves the use of specialized building trades or crafts. Examples from this class include C10, electrical contractors, C20, HVAC contractors, C27, landscaping contractors, C36, plumbing contractors, C39, roofing, C49, solar contractors, and C53, swimming pool contractors, just to name a few. There are also 30 limited specialty classes under the C61 classification. These include the C61 slash D49 tree service limited class. More than 209,000 contractors hold the C license in California. CSLB is offering our first new license classification in a decade. It's called the B2 Residential Remodeling Classification. The B2 allows contractors who don't have structural framing experience to get a license with CSLB. Here's what interested applicants need to know. B2 license holders must engage in three or more trades or crafts on a project. B2 licenses also are limited to working on existing residential wood frame structures. There are some things B2 license holders cannot do. They cannot make structural alterations to load bearing partitions and walls. They cannot install or extend electrical or plumbing systems. They can make modifications to existing systems, for example, install recess lighting or alter plumbing for two shower heads. A B2 license also cannot install or replace an HVAC system. Like all other CSLB licensees, B2 applicants slash licensees must comply with CSLB experience, examination, license bond and workers' compensation insurance requirements. CSLB is accepting applications for the B2 license and we are scheduling exam dates now. If you have more questions about the B2 license, email the licensing division at licensing at cslb.ca.gov. When you are ready to apply for a license, here are the two forms you will need. On the left is the license application. On the right is the certification of work experience. You can get these forms on the CSLB website. There is your bonus link on the left side of the page, so be sure to download this presentation. We will give you a closer look at the different sections of these forms in a little bit. Okay, now let's break down the steps of the application process. First, identify who will be the qualifier for your license. That person will be responsible for exercising direct supervision and control of the company. If you're using an RME, or Responsible Managing Employee, as your qualifier, determine if he slash she can qualify for an exam waiver. Be aware of comp companies you pay to connect you with a licensed qualifier. In some cases, these qualifiers are in a different part of the state and cannot exercise the direct supervision needed, or they aren't or don't understand their role as a qualifier. Next, make sure you complete the correct application. There are two options. First, application for original contractor's license. Number two, application for original contractor's license examination waiver 7065. We've got links to both at the bottom of the page. The next system is to determine your company name. Take a look at the application, for example. Some things to keep in mind. Your name cannot be misleading or imply that you qualify for a license classification other than what you are getting. For example, if you're going to apply for a C36 plumbing license, you cannot have company of John Smith Plumbing Construction, Heating and Drywall. Corporate and LLC names must match exactly the name registered with the California Secretary of State's office. The names of everyone on your Secretary of State registration must be listed on your CSLB application. You can also use what is called a DBA, 
which stands for doing business as. The main things to remember here is the DBA name cannot be misleading and you must use that name in all advertising and on all your contracts. Next, you will want to get together, um, together uh, certifications to support your work experience. You should do this even if you apply for an exam waiver. Feel free to use multiple pages if necessary. Next, be sure to note if you are a military veteran. Some of your military service may be used to meet your four years of experience qualifications. Also, your application may be expedited uh, through our military application assistance program. We mentioned that a few minutes ago, uh, we mentioned that a few minutes ago. There is also a bonus link at the bottom of the screen for more information on that program. To participate, you must have had an honorable discharge be sure to include a copy of your military DD-214 paperwork showing your honorable discharge with your application. The next couple of items are basic, but important. Proofread your application for any missing information. Make sure you have provided an answer to all necessary fields. Second, don't forget to sign and date the application. Finally, determine if you need a special accommodation to take your exams. If so, complete a request form and submit it with your application. We will talk about the use of translators a little later. Next, let's take a closer look at our fingerprint requirements, which are used for a criminal background check. This is a list of those who must submit a full set of fingerprints to CSLB depending on the type of business entity, all applicants, each corporate officer, each partner, each owner, the responsible managing employee, and all home improvement salespersons. If you are in California, you must submit fingerprints electronically with what's called live scan. You can get an updated list of live scan locations in California broken down by county on the attorney general's website we have a link here or you can simply go to the attorney general's website and search for live scan you will also see we have a bonus link at the bottom of the screen to the fingerprint information page on our cslb website if you're out of state it's going to be tough for you to get us your fingerprints that's because you must submit hard copies of them the old-fashioned way those take anywhere from between three to six months for the FBI and Department of Justice to process. So you might want to consider traveling to California to get your electronic live scan done here. So what happens if you have any criminal convictions? CSLB may deny your license for the following reasons. First, if your conviction is substantially related to the duties, functions, and qualifications of a contractor, Second, if your conviction involves fraud or a violent crime. There are other factors CSLB also con considers. They are the nature and severity of the crimes, the amount of time that has passed since a conviction, and any evidence of rehabilitation that you submit to CSLB. CSLB evaluates felony criminal convictions which occurred with, within seven years of the application date. So for applications filed this year, you would look back to 2014. For misdemeanor criminal convictions, we would look back for three years of the application date to 2018. That's unless the convictions are for a violent felony, certain sexual crimes or financial crimes related to construction. CSLB denies only 1% of the total applications we get based on criminal convictions. You will also note the bonus link to our fingerprint information page. Okay, along with the education credits we talked about earlier, this next section is probably the most important of the entire workshop and the part of the application that causes the most headaches for applicants. It is how you demonstrate your work experience on your application. Remember, the license qualifier needs four years or 48 months of experience within the past 10 years 
in the classification for which they're applying. That means at least four years of experience since 2011. The experience must be at no less than journeyman level or as a foreman, supervising employee, contractor, or owner builder. A journeyman is defined as an experienced worker who is fully qualified as opposed to a trainee and can perform trade without supervision or one who has completed an apprenticeship program. There is a limited amount of space on the application to show your certified work experience. So feel free to use additional pages if needed and simply attach them at the end of the work experience form. Use as many certifications of work experience form as you need to prove the required four years of experience within the last 10 years. Use a different form for each certifier. Be as accurate as possible. Make sure the person certifying your work describes the actual work you perform and the dates in which you perform them. We will now share some examples of both good and unacceptable descriptions to demonstrate work experience. Do not copy and paste this information directly into your application. These are just examples. At the top of this chart is the classification and type of experience you're trying to demonstrate. This first example is journey person experience. The overall theme will keep repeating is the more specific the description, the better. Note, the work experience form should be completed by your certifier, someone who has knowledge and has observed your work experience for the classification you're applying for. Okay. Our first example is for class B, general building contractor. The best type of description your certifier would use for journey person experience is to be a specific. Journey person experience must include hands-on work like this. Bob performed rough and finished carpentry, concrete forming and pools, rough out plumbing and electrical, interior exterior painting and flooring on residential homes. An unacceptable description would be something generic like residential general building trades. For four-person experience, the description must include some hands-on work and or supervisory work. Here is an example of the best type of description. Bob oversaw other staff at job site performing rough and finished carpentry, concrete forming and pools, rough out plumbing and electrical, interior exterior painting, and flooring on residential homes. Again, an unacceptable description would be something generic like residential general building trades. Now, for supervising employee experience, the description should include an explanation of how you arrived at the supervisor level. For example, as a construction lead on multiple projects, Bob supervised rough and finished carpentry, concrete forming and pools, rough out plumbing and electrical, interior exterior print, painting and flooring on residential homes. Again, unacceptable would be something like residential general building trades. For our out of state contractor experience, the description must include examples of work done that were out of state, military, on federal lands, or work for a government entity. Applicants can qualify as a journey person, four person, or supervising employee. A tip, be specific about your duties and employment circumstances. Our next example is the C-27, landscaping contractor. First, for experience at the journey level, journeyman level. The best type of description your certifier would use would be Jane performed landscape construction, maintenance and installation of sprinklers, ground plans, low voltage lighting, ornamental yard art, concrete mow strips and pathways and tree pruning. An acceptable explanation would be 
gardening, yard maintenance, planting. Now the best working experience for a 4% for C27 landscaping would be, Jane oversaw other staff at job site performing landscape construction, maintenance and installation of sprinklers, ground plants, low voltage lighting, ornamental yard art, concrete mow strips and pathways, and tree pruning. An acceptable description would be gardening, yard maintenance, planting. For a C27 supervising employee, the description should include an explanation of how you arrive at the supervisor level. This is a good description. As a construction lead on multiple projects, applicants supervise landscape construction, maintenance and installation of sprinklers, ground plants, low voltage lighting, ornamental yard art, concrete moor strips and pathways, and tree pruning. And again, unacceptable for supervising employee would be gardening, yard maintenance, planting. Finally, for out of state contractors, the same guidance that we showed you for general building contractor is required. Be sure to include examples of your out of state work, as well as work for the military, on federal lands, or for a government entity. Be sure to be specific when you describe your duties and employment circumstances. By law, CSLB must randomly review and verify all the information provided on at least 3% of our applications. Our next three slides run down the acceptable documentation you can use to support your work experience in the event that your application was selected and you were asked to provide additional documentation. The supporting documentation should not be mailed in with your application. You will only need to provide this information if requested by CSLB staff. On the lower right of the screen, you will see a link to this publication on our website, along with additional information on experience documentation. If you look at the chart, you can see the first column is for documents you can use if you are employed by a licensed contractor. The second column is for documenting your experience if you have been self-employed. The third column is for documentation you will need if you are applying for a Class B general building contractor license and need to use owner builder experience to meet the experience requirements. Here is the next page of acceptable documentation. Again, you can click the link to view and print this publication. If you do not have this information readily available, you may want to begin to gather it now, just in case you're asked to provide it in the future. Remember, you're trying to demonstrate four years of experience within the last 10 years. CSLB staff may contact the certifier experience or other parties to verify experience. On another note, CSLB gets more than 1,000 applications each month, so our application processing staff has seen it all. They've got two pieces of advice. First, don't cut and paste from this presentation. Also, don't try to get around having to take a trade test by applying for multiple subcategories under the C61 limited specialty classification. Okay, that is the content you'll need to fill out your application. Before getting to before getting it to CSLB, double check to make sure you did not miss anything. Be sure to sign and date it as well. And don't forget to include the all important $330 application fee you'll pay the $200 initial license fee after you pass your exam or exams. Then put your application packet in the mail to CSLB or hand deliver to one of our public counters. We've got a bonus link at the bottom of the screen with our office locations. Okay, now we will talk about different parts of the application. Section one, business name and address. 
uh, here is a uh, closer look at the application. Section one is where you list your business name. Remember, when selecting a business name, make sure the name that you have selected is compatible with the classification and the entity you're applying for, and is not misleading. If your business is a corporation or LLC, you will need to make sure that the name you provide in the section matches exactly the business name registered with the Secretary of the State. In line two, you will indicate what classification you are applying for. The mailing address and phone number that you list on this line 3A and 3C will be made public on CSLB's website once you are licensed. Section two, business entity. In section two, you will select your business entity. If you are applying for a corporation or LLC, you will need to provide your registration number provided to you by the Secretary of the State. Make sure to pay extra attention to the instruction in this section pertaining to the entity for which you are applying for. Section three. Here you will list the qualifier information. Remember, the qualifier is the person that meets the experience requirements and will be responsible for the direct supervision and control of construction operations. The qualifier will be the person taking the exams. On line six, you will list any previous or current license numbers you have held. You will also need to list the percentage of the new business owned by the qualifier. For example, if you are the only person that will be listed on the license, you would enter 100%. On lane seven, you will need to indicate what position will be held by the qualifier. Each entity has different personnel requirements. You will need to make sure that you have listed all positions depending on the entity you have selected. You can find more information on this on pages two through four of the application instructions. Line eight is where you will sign and date your application. Section four is where you will list the personnel information for all remaining personnel that will be listed on the license. For example, if you are applying for a corporation, you will need to indicate who will be the responsible managing officer or employee, president, secretary, and treasurer. Again, more information can be found on page four of the application instructions. If you will have more than four people on your license, you can make additional copies of this page and include it with your application. For corporations and LLCs, you will want to make sure that all personnel that are listed with the Secretary of the State are listed in this section. Okay, section five is a series of yes and no questions. So we are not going to cover those. Uh, section six. You may be uh, granted credit toward the four-year experience requirement based on your education. Question 17, ask if you have completed an educational or apprenticeship program. You will need to submit official sealed transcripts if you would like to be considered for this credit. If you attended formal training or an apprenticeship program, you will need to provide a certificate of completion. Get those sealed transcripts mailed to you, then include the sealed transcripts with your application packet. Do not have the program send transcripts directly to CSLB. You don't want to take a chance that we are not able to match them up with your application. CSLB may grant you up to three years of credit based on your education. This credit is not on a year-to-year -year basis, meaning if you have a two-year college degree, you won't necessarily be granted two years of credit towards the experience requirement. You may qualify for this credit regardless of when you completed your education. The 10 year time frame does not apply to education. You may also apply for this credit even if your education was received out of the country. If your degree is uh, 
if you're used to. It uh, is another language other than English. It must be translated and evaluated by accredited, uh, accredited evaluation service that does business within the US. Certification of work experience. Now we will discuss the certification of work experience. Part one will be filled out by you, the applicant. Here you will list the information about your employer where you gained your experience. If you were self-employed when you gained the experience, please make sure to check the box in line two. If you're applying for a B, general building construction license, and will be using experience obtained while working on your own property, make sure to mark the box in line four. Part two of the certification of work experience. It will be filled out by the certifier. In this section, the certifier must include the dates in which you obtain the experience. They must also select if you are working on a part-time or full-time basis. Keep in mind, if you were working part-time, you will receive 50% credit for that time, which means you will need to provide eight years of experience within the last 10 years to meet the four-year requirement. On line six, your certifier will need to list the duties that you perform or supervise that are considered critical for the classification that you're applying for. You can read a description of critical duties in CSLV's description of classifications booklet available on our website. Do not copy and paste the description from the booklet. This is only to give you an idea of what CSLB considers critical duties for each classification. Your certifier should complete this section in their own words and be as complete and accurate as possible. Now, final part of the certification of work experience is also to be completed by your certifier. They need to list their relationship to you and provide their contact information. Lastly, they will need to sign and date the certification. Now, uh, the next form we have is for the owner builder, general building construction uh, applicants. Uh, so this is, uh, this uh, project experience form have to be completed with the certification of work experience uh, when you're applying for the owner builder experience, working on your own property. A separate form is required for each project on the property. The experience must be verifiable through building permits, final inspections, and other documentation. You will need to list the building permit number on line six and on line seven, you will need to provide the scope of the project. In boxes eight through 10, you will need to provide more detailed information about the project. Question 11 asks if other general construction contractors work on the project and what trades they perform. With all the information uh, FOD just covered, this is a good time to remind you that we are recording this workshop. We'll post the video on our YouTube channel so you can go back and rewatch it in case there's anything you missed. Okay. So you've got your application submitted. How do you check the status of that application? Here are two resources. First is the secured check. You'll need your application fee number and contractor pen, uh, pen number to get an update. We'll send you that information after we receive, accept, and post your completed application. The second way to check is to look online at our processing times. Each week we update our website with the date we receive the paperwork for a specific process. So look for the date being worked on 
and know that if the date shown is after the date we likely received your paperwork, it's likely we're busy working on your application. As you can imagine, CSL CSLB receives hundreds, if not thousands of documents every day, and we process them in the order they're received. So be sure to take the extra time getting the application right so we don't have to send it back to you to correct, and then have to start the processing your application again. When your application has been accepted, CSLB will send you a notice to appear for examination and a study guide. You should get your exam notice at least three weeks prior to your exam date. CSLB test centers are currently open. They were closed from December until February for COVID. CSLB has seven test centers throughout California encourages candidates to take their exam at the nearest test center. If you if you are an applicant whose first language is in English and you don't feel confident taking your exam in English, we do allow you to use a translator. The translator who you provide simply reads you the exam questions. Question 16 on the application asks if you need to use a translator to complete the examination. The translator must be approved by the CSLB in advance. You cannot just show up on the day of your examination to the center, test center with someone to translate the exam for you. When you get an exam date, make sure you do not miss it. If you fail to appear for your exam, you will have to pay a non-refundable $60 fee to reschedule. That fee may be waived once with the uh, documented evi uh, that fee may be waived once with documented evidence of a medical emergency or other circumstances beyond your control, but that only once we can do that. Also, we have the study guides available for each of our exams. Included in each study guide, you will find a list of sections and topics covered by the exam. They also include sample questions, how each section of the exam is weighted, and recommended resources that you can use to prepare for the examination. These study guides are available online on our website. There is a bonus link to them on the bottom of the screen. Here's a quick look at two of those study exams. The first is the law and business exam, which all qualifiers must take, no matter which license classification, including the D series limited classes. You can see the guide contains a breakdown of examination topics, some test strategies, sample questions, and resources that were used to help create that exam. You will see the same format on the B general building study guide. We would recommend that you really pay attention to the exam content here, especially how we have broken down what percentage of questions there will be on each of the five topics on the exam. On the lower right of both of these two slides, you'll see bonus links to the actual study guide, as well as a link to the complete list of study guides. Again, our test centers are open. We do have COVID-19 procedures in place for applicants on test day. Here they are. Plan to arrive at least 15 minutes early for your exam. Give yourself extra time to get checked in. Applicants must wear a face mask or other face covering. Check and follow your local COVID-19 mask guidance before arriving for your test. If you appear ill, you will have to reschedule the exam for at least five days later at no additional charge. And you will not be admitted into the test center more than 15 minutes prior to your exam time. We have also produced a short what to expect on test day video that you can watch on our YouTube channel. The link is at the bottom of your screen. 
You'll take your exam on a touchscreen computer. Before starting, you'll see an on-screen tutorial that will take you through the process. The exam itself consists of multiple choice questions. You'll also see a space on each question where you can, if you want, submit a comment about that question. You'll get three and a half hours to complete each exam. Don't arrive late or that may reduce the amount of time you get to complete your exam. You'll get your results at the end of the exam. If you don't pass the exam, you will not be allowed to review the questions you missed, but you will get a statement showing how you did on each section of the exam. You can reschedule the exam as many times as you need to within the 18 month period as long as you pay the non-refundable $60 rescheduling fee each time. After you pass your exam, what happens next? First, you will need to pay $200 for your initial licensing fee, which will be good for two years. You will also need to complete an online asbestos open book exam. Plus, you will need to file your required $15,000 contractor surety bond and possibly some other bonds depending on what type of business entity you will have. And you will need to get your required insurance policy. If you have got employees, you will need to get workers' compensation insurance. If you're going to be an LLC, you will also need liability insurance. See our website for more information. Please note that your insurance company or broker can submit your insurance information to CSLB directly on our website. If you don't have employees, you must file a workers' compensation exemption with CSLB. You can do that online as well. In about five to 10 business days, CSLB will send you a wall cert certificate and plastic pocket license card. Display the wall certificate in your main office or chief place of business. Carry your pocket card with you, especially in situations where you're going to solicit business, talk to potential customers, or sign contracts. We encourage customers to ask to see your pocket license. If you're going to have salespeople working for you, be sure to get them registered as a home improvement salesperson with CSLB. Check our website for more on how to do that. Your license will be good for two years. It will expire on the last day of the month when it was issued. For example, a license issued today, October 1st, 2021, will expire on October 31st of 2023. Be sure to put that expiration date on your calendar in your phone, anywhere you need, so you won't forget it. CSLB will send you a renewal notice in the mail approximately 60 days before it expires, but ultimately it is your responsibility to renew your license on time. Here are a couple of other important deadlines to keep in mind. First, Notify CSLB within 30 days if you move or change your business address. Your renewal notice will be sent to the address of record that we have got on file. If you are not at that address anymore, you will probably not going to get it. Plus, the Postal Service will not forward the state government mail. Finally, notify CSLB within 30 days of all changes to personnel on your license especially when it involves the qualifier of the license.